Which one is your favorite? I'm going to launch this poll right here in, what is that? Uh, around the clock. What is the, what? What? Clockwise. That's what I'm saying. Clockwise, we got Yi Chi in the top left across the Equilops, Compsognathus, or Epidex Ipterix. Uh, the cool thing about, I think, Equilops being a little different here is it is a Ceratopsian. The rest are types of theropods. All right. Ooh, wow. I did not see. I thought we'd get more votes for Yi Chi, the dragon like guy. I have a question. Do they purposely pick cuter names for these small dinosaurs? They're just like so cute. Those are pretty good, cute names. You're right. You're right. So, right now, it looks like, wow, it's neck and neck between Aquilops, Comsignathus, and just going with Epi. Uh, wow, this is really close. We got 19% of the vote for Yi Chi. We got. 30% of the vote for Aquilops. Wow, I, Aquilops is not in the lead right now. I'm actually so shocked. It just jumped back up. I thought Compsognathus would be up there. So we got 19% Yi Chi, 30% Aquilops. Compsognathus, 23%. Epi, oh, Epi is jumping back up to 31%. Neck and neck, we have 20 votes for Epidex. I can never say it. Epidex Ipterix. And there it is. The final results are being shared Epi, our friend Epi slightly beats out Aquilops and fan favorite Com, which I spelled wrong. Com, there should be a P after C O M. Comsignathus. Uh, awesome. Those are four of the smallest dinosaurs ever. We talked about those yesterday, but it's not what we're talking about today. Today, obviously, we were talking about the world's largest dinosaurs, the absolute largest. But first, we do have a bingo. Grace, thank you again for supplying today's bingo. Grace, why don't you share with the group? Uh, what exactly this is, how it works, and what you win, potentially. Um, all right, so this is the bingo board. I'm also going to drop it in. Hi, Ma Max. That was Max. Bingo. Max is go. near the bottom um, left. You can check that off. We will. I'll drop it in the chat box as well. Um, mm -hmm. So if you get five across, down, up, diagonal, um, let me know. Just message me, and mm -hmm. you will get the opportunity to either ask, is your mom here? Uh, maybe <laughs> we'll see. If my yeah, mom doesn't ask promise questions. you're to ask um, Sharon a question about Dustin, embarrassing or not, or you can pick any mm -hmm. um, hall, country, animal, species, dinosaur, whatever from AMNH, and Dustin will tell you a fun fact or memory about that. Yeah, and that was Max holding uh, Maya. So both Max and Maya, you can check off. Good start to today's bingo board. Grace, I have another task for you. Uh, I need you to choose because to play Dino or not a Dino today. Ooh. Okay, wait, who played yesterday? Who played yesterday? Um, I don't remember who played yesterday. Every day has been just like slowly morphing into the next. You know what? I want, I want Callie to play. We already touched base with Callie. She's right here. She has an amazing background. Callie, you're going to play today. Uh, is, that, is that okay? Are you down to play Dino or not a Dino? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. So, Callie, are you familiar with how this game works? Yes. Okay. Just for those who may be tuning in for the first time, first of all, welcome. Second of all, we start every day with Dino Not a Dino. Here's how this game works. I'm going to read Callie a list of 10 different animals, some of which are actual real dinosaurs, some of which I have totally made up. Callie, you must determine which is a real dinosaur, which is not. For help, you can ask for a spelling. You can look around the Zoom uh, room. A lot of friends are going to give you thumbs up or thumbs down. You only have to get six out of 10, D minus, very low bar. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I mean, you can shoot for the stars like Natty. Natty crushed the game. She got 10 out of 10. Uh, we we want to be like- Look to Natty. <laughs> look to Natty for help. Yeah. Here we go. Let's dig in animal number one, Pelinator. Pelinator. Pellet with a P? P-E-L-E. N-A-T-O-R, Palinator. Depending on who you talk to, Palinator or Palinator? Let's say Dino. Palinator. You're going with Palinator as a dinosaur. Um, off uh -oh. to a rough start. That is not uh -oh. a <laughs> 0 for okay. 1. That is okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Number two. Noto Colossus. Noto Colossus. I think I'm going to go with Dino. You're going Dino for Noto Colossus. Yeah. Okay, Back good. Back in the green, one <laughs> and one. Number three, Mesomimus. 
Mess and minus. N Ness or mess? Mess. M E S S I M I M U S. Mesomimus. Not a dino. Patty, you're all giving you thumbs up. Not a dino. You are correct. Oh. You are now two and one. Well done. Two and one. Number four. Paralatitan. Paralatitan. Dino. Dino. Authoritative, convincing, <laughs> confident. That is a dino. You're now three and one. Okay. Tough start. You've got three in a row. Number four, Neymar Arc. Wow. Neymarchiocephaly. Neymarchiocephaly. No. Not a dino. Neymarchiocephaly is not a dinosaur. I don't think so. You are uh, correct. Sounds, oh, okay. You are correct. Four and one. These, These have themes, there. right? The there, fake ones have the themes. Theme. Have you have you figured out the theme of the not dinos yet? Messy helped. Okay. Uh, I think. I think. Okay. okay. <laughs> You, oh, you're someone who's also not very clean. You kind of have stuff strewn around everywhere. I can understand. Well, no, I was thinking soccer, but I don't know. <laughs> there's, there's still time. <laughs> there. Number six, Xinjiang Titan. Xinjiang Titan. I think Dino. You think Dino. You are correct. You have now gotten five right, Yay. one wrong. <laughs> Next, Ronaldonix. Run Not out a dino. No. Wow, right. uh, you are now. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one. S number seven. Soro Poseidon. Soro Poseidon. Grace with a very. Uh, Grace is like. Eh, eh. I think. I think dino. Kelly and I. I think we both maybe know the theme. But both. We're making like the same faces. Like maybe we know the theme, but. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to need an answer, though, for Sora Poseidon. Yes, I think. Yes, that yeah. is a dinosaur. <laughs> wow. You have now gotten seven right, one yeah. wrong. <laughs> for 90%, we got two more. Argentinosaurus. Ooh, that one. Did I just combine a country and Saurus? I don't know. Did I? Did someone else? Argentinosaurus. Let's go with yeah. What's what's making you say yes for this? Because the theme I think are the fake ones doesn't match for that, but okay. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, actually, it might. <laughs> what if I told you? What if I told you there's actually a theme for the real dinosaurs as well? We'll get back to that. That, that, would, throw, that would throw me off. So let's so, just, let's go with Dino. I see more thumbs up. That is correct. <laughs> That is correct. You are now, you have one, you've got an eight right, one wrong. To get a 90, to get an A, this is our last and final potential dinosaur. I'm going to read it slowly just to make sure there's no confusion. Right. Proto Megan Rapinodon. Uh, not a, not, I don't think that's a dino. I wish that was a dinosaur. <laughs> that would be that an is, insane dino. That is not a dino. You got nine out of 10. My colors, well done. What is the theme of the not dinos? Let me read them again and then you can tell everyone. We had Mesomimus, Pelinator, Namaraki, Archeoph, I can't even say it, Namarchiocephaly, Ronaldonix, and Proto Megan Rapinodon. Uh, I think it's professional soccer players? Those are all professional soccer players Pele, Messi, Neymar, Ronaldo. Pele, okay. Yeah, that the first one was tough. And mm -hmm. Megan Rapino. Now, the not the actual dinosaurs, Noto Colossus, Paralatitan, Jing Jiang Titan, Sauroposidon, and Argentinosaurus. Do you know what those all have in common? You may have to go to the chat box. Does anyone know what all of our actual dinosaurs have in common today? Some of them sound like they have Greek, um, like uh, like the gods listed in them, but I'm not sure like the Greek gods, but I don't think that covers all of them. That's true. That's We've true. got some people saying um, all large dinosaurs, long neck dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. um, sauropods. That is correct. These are all, so the, the actual dinosaurs are all members of the sauropod, the biggest group of animals that have ever existed. We can't talk about all of them today because we're only going to talk about the largest of each of the major groups. But all those ones I just listed are all giant sauropods, bigger than all, basically all the other ones we're going to talk about today, but we can only talk about one sauropod. So I thought I would list literally the group of the largest animals who have ever walked the face of the earth. 
Uh, Callie, you have won the game. Congratulations. Um, I don't know what we've won because we keep going back and forth on what you win. But you know what? At this point, you can just have lots of pride knowing that you got a 9 out of 10. Woohoo. All right. And speaking of, uh, Grace, thank you for reminding me. We do have a dinosaur of the day, just like every single day. Uh, and this is it. This is Shan Tungosaurus. This is the largest hadrosaur ever. We're going to talk about this in a little bit. Uh, hadrosaur means like stout, stout lizard. Uh, we also know the, these duckbill, or we know hadrosaurus is the duckbill dinosaurs. Shang Tungosaurus is the absolute largest for a little bit of scale. Here you go. I don't know what year that car is from, but I'm here for it. So this is our dino of the day. We're gonna do a little paleo art walk at the end to see all your amazing interpretations of Shan Tungosaurus. Now, Shang Tungosaurus is the largest of the, uh, the hadrosaurs. And so I thought today, again, instead of just doing the like five or the 10 biggest dinos, because those would almost exclusively be, actually they probably would exclusively be uh, sauropods, long neck dinos. I thought we would do the largest of each of my favorite groups of dinos, right? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna count down from the smallest of the largest groups to the absolute largest, which will be the sauropods. So to get this ball rolling, we have to start first with a group that we haven't, we haven't said this word before, let me open this up here. Here we go. The thyreophorans. So thyreophorans are basically the armored dinos. So think of your nodosaurs, your ankylosaurs, your stegosaurs. Thyreophorans are the armored dinosaurs. Technically, their name means shield bearers, right? And so for each of these groups that we're going to talk about today, I'm going to show you guys the largest, at least arguably the largest of that group. And actually, for the thyreophorans, we got almost a tie. And I want to include both of, the, both of these because they're very uh, popular dinos. So first, we got obviously Stegosaurus. Obviously, I want to start with Stegosaurus. Maybe not obviously, but I wanted to start with Stegosaurus because it's also the oldest of all the dinosaurs we're going to talk about today. As time went on through the Mesozoic, it seems, generally speaking, dinosaurs got larger and larger. So we see some of the larger ones later on in the Jurassic, definitely in the Cretaceous. But Stegosaurus was pretty large for 153 million years ago, right? 30 feet long, somewhere between, I should say, up to 30 feet long. I'm putting the maximum that we think up to 30 feet long, four to seven tons. This is how big it is compared to a person. If you don't like this image for scale, maybe you'll like this image for scale. Shout out to the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. That was two different bingo board squares I just mentioned right there. Uh, also, I want to mention, speaking of time, Dinosaurs were alive for a very long amount of time. Uh, in fact, our friend here, Stegosaurus, there is more time separating Stegosaurus and T-Rex than there is separating T-Rex and us and Jeff Goldblum. So a very long amount of time these animals were alive on this planet, allowing them to grow and proliferate and fill different ecological niches and evolved very dank adaptations for survival. The two of my favorite on these giant armored dinos, the Stegosaurus are, first of all, the plates on the back, we've talked about these before. Those grooves you see, those are channels where blood vessels were. So we think that these plates, these osteoderms, which are bones embedded in the skin, were crisscrossed with channels of blood vessels very close to the skin, potentially to allow it to better thermoregulate or even to blush and change colors when trying to woo a mate or maybe scare away a predator. We've said it before, I'll say it again, weird features on dinosaurs, fighting or flirting fighting, flirting, or fanning, sometimes it's just not, we're just not sure. That is probably, I think, the second, well, it's probably the most famous piece, most famous body part on the Stegosaurus, but we can't talk about Stegosaurus without talking about the Thagomizers. Those are meter-long tail spikes at the end of its leg. They are colloquially known, leg, end of its tail, they are colloquially known as Thagomizers because of this Gary Larson cartoon uh, where a caveman named Thag Simmons met his demise by a Thagomizer. I had, I'm just curious to know, drop a message in the chat. Who else had ever in their life had the far side daily tear off calendar? Do you remember those daily ones? They were like, it was a calendar and they were like about this big and every day you ripped off one. I'm wondering how many, I had, I love the far side. If you were into like smart, funny uh, cartoons, far side, look it up. All right, so that is the largest, one of the largest thyreophorans, the shield bearers, but about at the same size, so I couldn't put one above the other, so we're going to give them a tie for the largest the, the thyreophoran is, I know a crowd pleaser, one of the fan favorites, 
the ankylosaurus, right? So this is an ankylosaurus. I love its crazy like diagonal, I'm sorry, not diagonal, triangular head. If you want to know some uh, size of this guy, we're about 26 feet long. So slightly shorter than a stegosaurus, but possibly a little bit heavier. So again, about the same size, but lived much later. Remember stegosaurus about 150 million years ago. This is around 67 million years ago. So this thing is, was around right about, about the end of the time of all the non-avian dinosaurs. If you need something else for scale, uh, little known fact, they all were the color of Kermit with yellow heads. It's just recent research came out. I know a lot of people probably don't know about that. Um, but this is basically how big this guy was compared to you. At the end of its tail, it had those two crazy uh, tail spikes. Oh, before we get to that, you may recognize these guys from the newest, or not the newest, the first Jurassic World. There were, uh, what, the scene where they're in like that glass ball thingy and they're rolling around. This is the ankylosaurus from Jurassic World. Again, their head, these are the most heavily armored animals, well, dinosaurs, but maybe animals of all time. Uh, we're talking like walking tank. I mean, look at this head. First of all, that is the business end of the front, but also there's a business end of the back. So these are two larger than bowling ball size osteoderms. Again, bones embedded in the skin. They had an incredibly flexible tail and they were able to use this tail to, as a defense mechanism, uh, potentially shattering bone of, of other dinos that were trying to eat it. So not only is this guy huge, he is absolutely not to be messed with. So this Stegosaurus and Ankylosaurus, I'm gonna put as a tie for the largest Thyreophorans, which are the armored shield-bearing dinosaurs. Now, we're gonna keep moving on because we have a lot of very large dinos to get to. This is another crowd pleaser, fan favorite, the one, the only, the Triceratops. So Ceratopsians are the group of horned-faced dinosaurs. There's multiple different ones. We've talked about Achilops. We just saw that tiny one. We've talked about Protoceratops. It's literally on my shirt. We talked about Styracosaurus with the eight-spiked frill. But Triceratops is the most famous and the largest at up to 26 feet long, almost 14 tons. For a little bit of size context, here you go. This is how big we think about, about as big as a Triceratops is. If that is not a good enough size context, uh, does anyone know where this is? Grace knows where this is. Drop it in the chat if you know where this photo, where I took, I absolutely took this photo. Nothing is doctored about this whatsoever. That is a real actual photo. Does anyone in the chat know where that is? Nobody in the chat knows where that is taken? Uh, one person so far. Two people so far. Share it again. This was featured, this area was featured in the first Men in Black, also the 1964 World's Fair. Yep. Yep. All right. Yeah, some people got it. Flushing, Queens, Corona Meadow Park. Yes, Flushing. Yes, Flushing Meadows, Corona Park. This is out way, way, way. Eastern Queens, this is where the site of the 1964 World's Fair was. This is also where the New York Hall of Science is. Shout out to my former place of employment. Uh, yeah, that globe is large, but so is the Triceratops as the largest Ceratopsian. All right, moving on. We've done Thyreophorans, we've done Ceratopsians. Next. Actually, I'm curious. Hmm. I'm gonna ask you guys again in the chat. What do you guys think is the next largest group of dinos that we are gonna talk about? Talked about the Thyreophorans, we talked about the Ceratopsians, and we're getting slightly larger. There's another, the next major larger group of dinos. Does anyone know? Catherine thinks theropods. So theropods, sauropods are the biggest, theropods come in second, this is the third. Uh, Michael said metal the Pachys. The Pachys, no, the Pachys are pretty small. Um, Pachycephalosaurus was the biggest of the Pachys, but that would have been even we, smaller than the- um, Hadrosaurus. I see some, I see hadrosaurs, I guess. I see ornithopods, iguanodonts. You guys hitting the nail right in the head. Well done, Megan, especially because Megan's background is a, it appears to be a bunch of different types of hadrosaurs, a specific type of ornithopod. Well, is there, is, Sh is Shang on here? Is that, okay, your, your screen is a little shrunken. So it's that orangey one down the bottom. Nice, you're absolutely right, Megan. Well done. We are moving on now to the bronze medal winning group for the third largest group of dinosaurs to have ever existed. It is the hadrosaurs. It is our dino of the day today, Shang Tungosaurus. 70 million years ago, so a little more recent, up to 55 feet long. 
right? So this is almost twice as long as our ankylosaur or our stegosaurus. Uh, a little bit heavier as well, up to 23 tons. This is a very, very large dinosaur, again, uh, as depicted next to this. For some reason, they went with a, a two-door rather than a four-door car. What are you going to do? <laughs> Very large duck build dino. Uh, I found some fun pictures of Shang Tungosaurus. I actually didn't know a ton about it. We focus a lot about on Edmontosaurus and Hadrosaurus and Parasaurolophus, uh, Lambiosaurus, other very famous hadrosaurs. Um, I didn't know a ton about Shang Tungosaurus. Shang Tungosaurus. It's a Chinese hadrosaur. Um, this is a really cool image of it appearing to be in a fight with some type of theropod. It's not. It's hard to say right here. But I love like the movement and the action in this one rather than just like an animal standing, which often we see paleo art depictions. Uh, but this is only my second favorite. I apologize, this one is blurry, but I found this image, which looks like it's just getting ready to take a number two. I don't, I'm not sure, um, but someone spent the time to have it squatting. To, oh, maybe laying eggs, that's what it's doing. It's about to drop some eggs. That's probably more accurate. Who knows? Giant long uh, duck-billed snout there. With I should mention, did I write this down? I know I wrote this down somewhere. I want to get this right. Oh, where is it? 1,300? I don't know. I don't know where my note went. There's something like 1,300 teeth in its mouth. Over 1,000 tiny teeth in its mouth, grinding up tons and tons of plant matter. That is also your dino, dino of the day, Shang Tungosaurus. It is the largest hadrosaur. We are going to pause for a second because obviously everyone loves theropods like Spinosaurus, T-Rex. They love the sauropods like Brontosaurus, Titanosaur. So I thought I would exclude those from this poll. So your poll now, ladies and gentlemen, is we've learned nothing from Jurassic Park and thus have decided to bring back one giant dinosaur of the four we just talked about. We're bringing back one single individual. Is it a Stegosaurus? Is it an Ankylosaurus? Is it a Triceratops? Or is it a, our dino of the day, the Shantungosaurus? What are we bringing back to put in Grace's backyard? You've got the space, I assume. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, ooh, neck and neck. Ankylosaurus seems to be in the lead right now, but Stegosaurus is slowly catching back up. 84% of people voted. We got to get 90% of votes. This is a representative democracy. Vote like your life depends on it. This is a warm up for the most important election of our lifetimes. Which uh, I am of... very, very pleased with these results. You're pleased with this? Why are you pleased oh. with the results so far? Well, I love a triceratop, and so far that's winning. So if it has to live in my backyard, that's I'm fair. like all for that. Right now, 35% of the vote is Triceratops. Uh, neck and neck, right about 28%. Both Ankylosaurus and Stegosaurus. We'll see who takes the silver. It looks like Shantungosaurus getting no love as our dino of the day at only 16%. I'm going to give this poll five, four, three, two, one. And polls are closed. I'm ending the poll and sharing the results. Triceratops takes it, 26 votes. Close behind Stegosaurus with 22 votes and Kylosaurus with 20 votes. Shang Tungosaurus with only 12 votes. That looks like we are bringing back a Triceratops. Uh, let's just hope it doesn't get sick because it got into the West Indian lilac. That is a deep oh. cut for my JP stands. JP, let's go. We still have to schedule our, our viewing or collective getting together to view uh, Jurassic Park. All right. I'm going to take a break. I've been going pretty quick because we got a lot of dinos to go through. I'm going to take a deep breath. Grace, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm okay. excited for what's coming next. Do you know what's coming next? Um, there are two groups, two major groups of dinos that are the largest land animals ever. Theropods. Theropods and? Sauropods. Which one is smaller of the two? Because we're counting Theropods up. is smaller. Grace, you used to say you don't know anything about dinosaurs. Look how much you've learned simply by being here in Dino 101. Right. Now you can put this on your resume uh, <laughs> moving forward. Okay. You can put me as a reference. All right, guys, here we go. We're getting to the two largest groups of land animals to ever grace this planet, or maybe any planet. We don't know. What if there were dinosaurs on another planet? That's a discussion for another day. Here we go. That is not it. That is our duckbill hadrosaur of the day. The largest Theropod. Theropod means wild beast foot. It's not T-Rex. It's not Carcharodontosaurus. It's not Giganotosaurus. It is Spinosaurus, which we've learned a ton about over the last week. I know you, most of you guys have probably seen the Spinosaurus news. We're going to get into that in a second. Spinosaurus lived about 100 million years ago, almost 60 feet long. 
Its weight is highly debatable. It's a big range there between six tons and 21 tons. That's a huge discrepancy, right? Someone could say six. The other person could say it's three times as big weight-wise, mass-wise, and it's still within that same range. Now, for a little bit of scale, because this guy's in the water, it's kind of hard to tell. This is how big a full-size spinosaur is next to a human and the largest land animal today, the African elephant. So again, enormous animal. This is the largest theropod to have ever existed. And I know we did a whole day on spinosaurs last week, and our timing was awful because we literally did it the day before the big new Spinosaurus uh, news was announced. And that takes us to this slide. But, so, well, I want to say that maybe our timing is perfect and we're just ahead of the game. Thank you, Grace. That's a good, that's a good take. I like that. No, right? we are, we're breaking, you know, the information before yeah. a place like the New York Times does right we here. Are priming, we are priming people for the scientific exactly. debate that they're going to exactly. get more information for the next day. Perfect. Right. The time should be giving us like checks now to getting people ready for the real news. So we talked a lot about Spinosaurus. We talked about the debate about A, where it lived, B, its body shape, and C, just its overall size. And you can see on the left here how the debate has kind of changed and shifted over time. The most recent piece of evidence that just came out literally less than a week, is a week ago was newly analyzed tail material, right? And because we have so much more of the tail now, we can see that it's shaped very different then we think of like a T-Rex tail to be shaped. And because that shape is so different, it gave us more evidence to suggest and really solidify that this dinosaur spent a lot of time in water. Maybe not all, all the time, but a fair amount of time in water, using that tail as a propulsion device, as well as using those very big curved in clawed hands, probably to catch food in water and not on land. So this is a beautiful kind of eerie depiction that we can see that tail being much broader much different uh, than like a T-Rex tail, which is probably just a counterbalance. This thing was actually used to propel this animal through water. And if you need more evidence, here's the tail next to what a common newt, like a newt that is live today's tail looks like. Very, very similar shape. And it gives us pretty good clues that this thing spent a fair amount of time in water using that tail in a somewhat similar way to propel itself around as it hunted aquatically, which means images, like this walking around on land probably aren't quite as accurate as images like this swimming around in the oceans a hundred and mil a hundred million years ago as the largest theropod ever. Theropod again, wild beast foot, 60 feet long, up to 20 tons. One of the most impressive, freakiest, dankest dinosaurs of all time. Dank, I believe, was a uh, a word on the bingo board. So I know we have a ton of Spinosaurus stands here. I love Spinosaurus as well, but it's not the largest dinosaur ever. It's the largest carnivorous animal ever. It's not the largest dinosaur. Grace, pop quiz again. What is the group of animals that is the largest animals to have ever walked the face of the earth? The sauropods. Sauropods. Grace, what does sauropod mean? I don't know why I'm just quizzing you today. Grace, what does sauropod mean? Land. Dinosaur. <laughs> land dinosaur. Uh, it is a land dinosaur, but sauropod means lizard footed or lizard foot, actually. Pod is foot, sore, as in dinosaurs, lizard. Aren't like uh, all of these lizard footed? How is that? That is true. Like that qualifying is. for these. Uh, you're, it's, not, it's not very specific. It's not quite as specific as some of the other ones. That is fair. <laughs> but here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Now, there is still a fair amount of debate. With respect, I'm gonna unshare for a second. There's a fair amount of debate with respect to which is the actual largest sauropod of all time. And the reason being is because, first of all, again, it's very hard to calculate the exact like weight and mass of an animal when we have none of the fleshy parts and we have very little evidence uh, with respect to how girthy or how muscular or how fatty it was. Also, the larger an animal gets, generally speaking, the larger a dinosaur gets, the more, the less likely it is to find a complete skeleton, right? If you have like an Archaeopteryx or any of the small ones we saw earlier, like Compsognathus or Achelops or Yichi, right? They're very small. It's more likely you're going to find the entire specimen. With a giant long neck sauropod, sometimes you find just a couple pieces here and there. So it's hard to put together the entire animal, right? And so because it's hard to put together an entire animal because we don't have all the pieces and we don't have any of the soft fleshy parts, we have to make pretty well, pretty wide speculations with respect to how big they actually got. And I say all this because 
I don't want to piss off any like Dreadnoughtus stands or Argentinosaurus stands. These are all different long neck sauropods that are arguably around the same size. So it's hard to say which one was the absolute largest. But because it is near and dear to my heart, it's near and dear to Christina's heart. We'll get back to that in a second. And it's literally in the museum Grace works in. For my money, we have to go with the Patago Titan, the Titanosaur as the absolute largest animal, not just sauropod, not just dinosaur, largest animal that's ever lived in the history of the world. This is it. Patago Titan is the scientific name. The nickname before it was given a scientific name was Titanosaur. Patago Titan is from the area in Patagonia in Argentina where this guy was found. And I say this guy, but it's really, it's more than one guy because I believe they found around 250. I need to stop putting notes on multiple things. Here we go. They found 223 individual bones from at least six individual dinosaurs, right? So if you have a bunch of bones, you can figure out how many are of one dinosaur versus if it's multiples because you'll have, you know, you're not going to have three femurs in one dino. So that's one way you start to calculate how many were in this potential, in this bone bed. So where they found these in Patagonia, again, at least six different individual dinosaurs, over 223 bones. Its length, at least the Titanosaur at am h and at the Field Museum, 122 feet long. 100 and, so that's twice as long as a Spinosaurus. Twice as long as a Spinosaurus. The largest animal that's alive today, the blue whale, is about 90 feet long. It's a good 30 feet longer than that blue whale. Its weight is highly variable. We're estimating between 55 and 77 tons. Uh, that being said, it is the largest animal to ever walk on land, but it's not the largest animal ever. That blue whale, even though it's 30 feet shorter, I mean, the blue whale is just a giant fuselage of blubber, right? And so if you look at one of these giant sauropods, there's not much weight in the tail or even in that beautiful neck meat. And so blue whales at almost 200 tons, uh, probably about twice as big in weight size, uh, which is bonkers to think that we currently right now are all living at the same time the largest animal in the history of the world has ever lived considering that this world the history of life on this earth is like 3.5 billion years we're in like an eye blink we get to do it with the blue whale i mean i would have preferred the patago titan but what are you going to do and so this is it patago titan mayorum the largest animal that's ever walked on the face of the earth um and again there's a, some debate about which sauropod might actually be the biggest but if the field museum is willing to put uh, a giant sauropod and call it the biggest at Patago Titan and am h Oh, by the way, this is Maximo. So the name at the field museum is Maximo. I forget the phone number, but you can, there's a phone number that you can text Maximo to ask him questions. And he'll send you uh, answers back. Shout out to the field. Uh, Maximo took Sue's spot because Sue had to move up into their own suite because as the best dinosaur, we're talking about biggest right now, largest, but simply as the best, obviously Sue would need their own home to be in. And so Sue has now moved upstairs into their own suite. I'm sorry we didn't get to talk about Sue today, but guess what? I guess we're doing it right now. And that's also a bingo card. Also a preview, we're gonna do a whole Sue the T-Rex day coming up very soon. So this is Maximo the Titanosaur at the Field Museum in Chicago. This is the Titanosaur that first went up about three years ago, I wanna say at this point. Um, at the American Museum of Natural History in New York, Grace's shop. Um, it was um, January 15th, 2016. So that's four years ago. Yes. About four years ago. Okay. And this is near and dear to a lot of our hearts uh, at am &H, including our co-host who's not here today. Oh, wait, sorry. That's the last slide. Um, I wanted to show this one, which I need to make this way bigger because you can barely see it. So I want to show you guys this because, first of all, we didn't find a head for, for a titanosaur. There was no head. This is a hypothetical head based off of other very similar large titanosaurs. So we never found a head. So we're using other ones as corollaries uh, to make assumptions about what its head and what its teeth look like. And I love this, this image right here because A of all, you can see how big this head is. B of all, you can see those giant little peg teeth. And I know we've talked about this before, but it's one of my funny favorite things to mention. There's no teeth in the back, right? If you think about your mouth, we have teeth in the front for biting, we got and chew, or breaking off and tearing, we got teeth in the back for grinding. They have no teeth in the back for grinding anything. So if you imagine this dude's arm as like a branch covered in leaves, this guy, uh, um, this uh, titanosaur would probably grab that branch and just scrape all the plant matter off it 
Again, it's not chewing, so it's swallowing it whole. And so we think because of that, they probably had saculated chambered stomachs, somewhat similar to ruminants today, like cows, using different types of bacteria to help digest that literal ton of food they're eating. And because of all that bacterial action, you're going to create a lot of methane, uh, aka farts and burps. So just like farts and actually primarily burps from cows today have been shown to slightly change our climate because they are a greenhouse gas, grass being admitted, there is decent evidence to suggest that farts and primarily burps from long neck sauropods, much like titanosaur, actually change the climate in the Cretaceous which is bonkers to think about, uh, even worse to think about what would happen if you got farted on by a titanosaur. Uh, like you could die, you might literally die. That is a lot of methane to inhale. Now, speaking of methane to inhale, we have a big farter here. That's a weird segue that doesn't make any sense. You guys, this is Christina. I wanna give a shout out to Christina. She's not here today, but this is her absolute favorite dinosaur, the titanosaur. And this is her on graduation day, at the American Museum of Natural History when she graduated with her master's in geology from the Richard Gilder Graduate School at AMH. So shouts to Christina, there was no way I wasn't gonna be able to mention that today. But the last thing I wanna say, before we go into some questions and one more poll, is I like this image right here, and I like thinking about how much these guys ate, right? We know that titanosaurs and sauropods were the largest animals ever walk on the earth, many of which probably were eating literally all day, every day. You need a lot of calories, you need a lot of plant matter to be able to sustain a body size that big and moving it around, right? But yesterday, we talked about literally the smallest dinosaur. So think about, first of all, the amazing diversity in size and shape of dinosaurs from the bee hummingbird that is alive today, about two inches long, weighing less than a penny, to titanosaur at 70 tons, largest animal to ever walk the face of the earth. But within that diversity is a very common theme, at least that I recognize for big and small, which is that both of those animals had to eat all of the time in order to maintain their particular way of life. A, like a sauropod just simply being that big, you need that much calories to survive, or a bee humming or this big with the largest, the fastest metabolic rate of any animal on the planet today, you have to eat all the time to be able to power their body. So big or small, the common theme for dinosaurs is they were eating eating and eating and eating and eating. And again, that may be producing a lot of methane. So Grace, as we transition to our questions and comments, I want to put our last poll up. Before we do that, if you wanna get us ready, uh, here we go. Oh wait, we already did that poll. Where's the poll? All right, guess what? That poll's not working. Grace, what questions and comments do we have from the squad before we transition into our QR into our dino drawings of the day? Um, well, I first want to say Natty's got a bingo. So Natty, can you please message me what you want me to ask Sharon? Is, is my mom here? I have not seen her. Natty, I'm sorry, she's not here, but let me know something at AM and H that you want to know about. Um, and while we're doing that, so great questions. Um, Megan wants to know, I noticed that a lot of the group's largest species are the best known of their kind. Um, what is the dino of the day, which I'm not going to attempt to say, discovered later than the other hadrosaurs? Shang Tung Osaurus. Yeah, I believe the Shang Tung Osaurus was discovered in the 70s or 80s. So yeah, much later. I mean, we knew about, remember, Hadrosaurus, uh, which is also a very large hadrosaur, was the first dinosaur to ever be mounted in a museum in the United States. And I think that was like 1898 or 1903, like right around the turn of the century. So yeah, we've known about a lot of them prior. Um, but I think even more so than that, it's like, it, they're dinosaurs. The thing that captivates people is the giant size, first and foremost. You can't miss something that is almost literally larger than life. And so I think people just like to navigate in superlatives, the biggest, the baddest, the best. And so, yeah, I think the best known are simply because they're the biggest. It, it captures the imagination in ways that smaller ones just don't. Um, so a lot of people are asking about um, evolution of these giant dinosaurs. Did mm -hmm. they start out being so large? How did they get to be so large? Um, you know, was this over the course of millions of years, they finally got to be this big? Over the course? 
Wait, say that last part. So, so a lot of people are just asking questions about were these large dinosaurs always this large or did they start out a normal smaller size and eventually over the course of million, millions of years get to be how giant they were? Yeah. So uh, they evolved to be that big. To, they slowly evolved to fill, fill ecological niches and environments, exploiting plant matter uh, in ways that smaller ones did not. Anytime you see a dino name that has like pro in front of it, or proto or basal, those basically all mean like early or first. So like a basal sauropod would be one of the very first sauropods. I've showed you Ardonyx before. Um, and basically what that means is some of the first of that kind and they were much, much smaller. Um, and then slowly over time, as they diversified and they evolved into different areas, certain features, including being large, helped them to survive. Whether that was simply to be able to reach higher up in the canopy for sauropods to get more food, or being larger means it's harder for predators to attack and kill and eat you. So both of those things are probably big selective pressures on the current species that allowed them to slowly diversify and evolve into the different farms we see today, right? But nothing just showed up as being giant. You know, animals started as smaller and it's harder to evolve into a smaller ecological or environmental niche because those are probably are already taken, all already taken. I, one of my favorite analogies about this is if like, imagine like being against a wall and the wall itself is like tiny, not the wall is being tiny, but like the wall against the wall represents really small animals. There's only kind of one way to evolve. You can't evolve backwards into being smaller shapes uh, for most of these. So there's only really one way to go within that environment to be able to exploit more resources to survive longer and to produce more offspring. Because that's really all the evolutionary process cares about, whether or not something works enough to get more of your offspring into the next generation. Awesome. Jonathan uh, would like to know, he says, I've seen several depictions of sauropods with elastic headgear. Think the throat pouch of a frog, as well as neck waddles like turkeys or chickens. How likely is it that these types of physical traits existed in sauropods? That's a great question. Um, how likely? I would say possible and probable. I bet some did, right? If you think about the features we see on modern animals, a lot of them we probably wouldn't know about if they weren't alive, if we only had their, their uh, skeletons, right? We, there used to be theories about how some sauropods had almost like a proboscis-like uh, snout or almost like a trunk, like an elephant, based on the shape of its skull and the positioning of the holes. We don't think that's the case. But as far as like different kind of skin waddle features, uh, maybe, we're not sure. There's theories about how hadrosaurs may have had like a skin flap on the end of their snout that they could expand to make bigger either, I don't know, like for display purposes, it's really hard to know. It's really hard to know and to hypothesize about the soft features, but I think it's probable. I don't think all of these things were just like, like covered in tight skin with no extra skin or integumentation, which is like soft features that we don't see in the fossil record. So I would say probable, but it's really hard to know exactly what those look like, where they were positioned. We have to use modern corollaries to make uh, smart guesses about that. And for a lot of these, there just really aren't modern corollaries. And that's, again, why dinosaurs are science's greatest enigma, and I love them so much. Awesome. Um, this question seemed suspicious to me, but I, I, maybe I just don't know about this. Kai wants to know, do you think most sauropods consumed rocks to aid in digestion? Cool. Uh, so is, that a, is that a thing? That is, an app, that is absolutely a thing. It's not just Perfect. sauropods. Uh, a lot of different types of dinosaurs we've, we've found with gastroliths, so gastro is like food or eating, lith is stone, so gastrolith are stones that an animal swallows to help aid in digestion, right? If you got a bunch fun, of stones Fun in fact, there. my yeah. email at m &H is gastro, so fun facts. Okay, cool. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So it's not just sauropods, we found, I forget which specific species, but I know we found certain ornithomimosaurs with gastroliths as well, uh, and they swallow them to help aid digestion. So maybe that in conjunction with bacterial action, helping them break down that ton of food they're eating. That's a great question. And that's actually a thing uh, that happens. Even there's certain animals today that do that as well. Also, just because I noticed it in the chat, text Maximo at 70221. If you send a text to 70221, uh, Maximo the Titanosaur at the Field Museum will respond to you unless he is busy hanging out with Sue. 
All right, one last question, then I've got it, the bingo thing. So cool. um, Noah wants to know, what are some other ways you can figure out whether a fossil is from the same individual or another individual? Like if you don't find the same bone again and again and again. You, you're not sure, right? You can, you can say, so for instance, we know that the Patagotitans that we found in Patagonia, the Titanosaur, was at least six individuals, right? Because we have enough pieces that are duplicates to say this is at least six individuals. It could be more, but we're not sure, right? Until you have duplicates of a bone that you already have, um, it's hard to, hard to figure that. And also it's very rare that you find A, a complete specimen and B, a bone bed or a situation where you have more than one individual. So that's like, that's like a treasure trove. That's like finding a treasure if, you are, if you're a paleontologist, even more so than just one dino. Because you've got a whole group there, and that can tell you a lot about A, the fact they're living together, and B, about the growth and the ontogeny, which is how the body grows and changes over time and their sizes. One of the reasons I love the protoceratops here uh, that's on my shirt and is at the American Museum of Natural History is because we have, they're like the rats of the Gobi Desert. We have found so many of them that we can see them at every single life stage. And you can see how their body changes and grows from an infant to an adult. So at AMNH, there is a lineup of probably, I think, somewhere between six and eight protoceratops skulls, just one next to each, next to each, each one getting slightly smaller as you go. So it's like a whole, it's like a whole family reunion. Fun facts. So I messed up. Natty did not get bingo, but Maria did. And Maria wants to know, um, does AMNH have a marine mammal hall? Yes. Well, we have marine halls with mammals in it. There's a mammal in the marine hall, um, but she wants to know, are there any cool stories or facts about the marine mammal hall? So there's no marine, ma well, I guess the hall of uh, ocean life, ocean I guess life. the hall of ocean life would be the marine mammal hall because yeah. there are dolphins in there. There's a giant whale hanging from the ceiling. And polar bear. And a polar bear. That's true. I, I don't know if I would call a polar bear marine mammal. That's actually a good. I don't know. It's an Arctic mammal. It leaves uh, the Hall of Ocean Life, which is a little odd. Anyway, tell us some fun facts about the Hall of Ocean Life. Yeah, you know what? That's, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, speaking of bringing things up, I'm going to bring up this background and talk about how they brought up this whale because that is the bonk, most bonkers story. So this is it. Welcome to the Hall of Ocean Life at the American Museum of Natural History. This you are seeing is a giant blue whale, the largest animal to have ever existed. And it's hanging from the ceiling, which is bonkers, uh, but it's not real. It's not a taxidermy whale. You can't preserve aquatic life quite the same way you can terrestrial stuff. So almost everything in the Hall of Ocean Life is a model, including this whale, which weighs 21,000 pounds. It is hollow, it is fiberglass, and it is only attached to the ceiling at one little spot. You can see it up at the top. In fact, <coughs> that roofing, the big beams you see, those are iron beams that act as a scaffolding to hold up this 21,000 pound whale. I'm gonna try to tell this story rapid fire because we don't have much time, but it's a great story that I wanna share. So back in the 60s, a dude named Lyle Barton, a curator, was in charge of hanging this whale, or he was in charge, I'm sorry, of redoing the Hall of Ocean Life. And he was like, yo, I've been to natural history museums before. I've seen whales that are just like straight skeletons. Sometimes they flesh them out, but usually it's just like a skeleton on the ground. I want to flesh it out. I want to make it look like it had just come up and breached for air and then started to dive back down. But no one had ever hung 21,000 pounds from the ceiling before. So Lyle was like, yo, I got this. Don't worry about it. He used the scaffolding and the iron beams up there. This whole whale is hollow. There's one beam that comes out right about here, attaches to the ceiling, and then one beam that runs the whole length of the hollow whale fuselage. Lyle's crew was relatively paranoid. This was not gonna be structurally sound. So what they did, and this is a true story, for the last week before the big unveiling to the museum trustees, they had a wooden stick cut. I'm saying Lyle had a wooden stick cut that measured the exact distance from the tip of the whale's nose, right about here to the floor. And by the way, if you're standing under it, the tip of the nose is maybe like, 15 feet high, so like one and a half basketball hoops. Uh, there, his crew found out that every morning he was coming in, putting that stick there between the, the, the tip of the nose and the ground to make sure the whale wasn't sagging, right? They didn't think it would just rip out of the ceiling. They thought it might start to like bend and bow a little bit. So putting a stick there was his weird way of testing the structural integrity. His crew thought that was weird as well. So what they decided to do that week when he left work is dip the wooden stick in glue and just a little bit of sawdust. Right, so each day that stick got incrementally longer 
Friday rolls around, the day of the big unveiling, he puts the stick there, tries to put the stick there, it won't fit. He's like, oh my God, I'm gonna kill everyone. They told him they were pranking him and then they used the same prank on the trustees. So banquet tables under the whale, everyone in their finest attire, all the museum big wigs. It looks like that stick is an integral part of the support system holding this whale up. Mid speech, he takes a bottle of champagne from a nearby table, Matt smacks the stick out, everyone gasps. Supposedly, like according to the, uh, the records, people dove under their tables. I don't know how that's gonna help you if 21,000 pounds are falling. Uh, but it hung and it's been hanging ever since, which is bonkers for the largest animal that's ever lived. Their eyeballs are the size of a basketball. Their heart is the size of a Corolla. This is a 91 foot long female blue whale because male blue whales have the largest something else in the animal kingdom at about 10 feet. Uh, and that's why this is a female blue whale, which you could still say it's pretty well hung from the ceiling. It's really well hung from the ceiling. These are iron beams. 21,000 pounds. Uh, I'm really glad you asked that question because it's one of my absolute favorite stories from the Museum of Natural History that took too long. That's okay, let's get to know our drawings. Grace, did I answer that adequately as a current employee of the American Museum of Natural History? You did such a great job and I just wanna let everyone know I'm dropping into the chat box a grade article with some photos from when it was being hung in 1968. So you can see um, Very cool. what Dustin's talking about. Nice. All right, we're going to go around, hang up, or hang up, hold up those Shang Tungosauruses. This one looks pretty great. I like, Megan, I want to see some color on this next time, but I think you're doing great. Uh, let's see, we're going to Natty. Natty, all-time champion here. Timmy, Timmy's a great name. Grace, Grace, how do you feel about Jada's here? Oh, it's beautiful. You can hang out in my backyard. I love it, Jada. That's, that's good. That's good. I like that a lot. Martin, come and correct per usual. Vivian. Oh, yeah. Just taking care of this theropod that tried oh, to attack it. Oh, like a battle. Yep, right. Wow. Catherine's big boy big shanty. Boy. Love so, it. Yeah. Into it. Into it. Uh, let's see. M, looking good. Oh, I like this one. I like the, the view from the front. That's good. I like that one a lot. Um, it's a little bit different from Ashley's here, who's the color, holding a car. I think that car, it's like a little car. <laughs> it's good though. I like that. Let's see who else. Uh, Agus has something and a note. It says, sorry about yesterday. I had to work and couldn't draw. Yeah, Agus, we actually had a debate on whether or not we should even let you in the room today. <laughs> Very upset. No, that's great. Look at that paleo art gallery. Yeah, behind. Agus, you just have to make it up and add it to the wall so you have a complete series. That's true. Yeah. Uh, coming correct per usual. Oh, Margo has switched from digital to pen and ink. Interesting. Okay. Switching up. Larry is large and in charge. Oh, Sharon. Shannon? Shannon. Okay. Large and in charge. Nice. Nice. Let's see what else. Oh, Bryn. Uh, Bryn looking good. Uh -huh. Oh, the architect, I like that, because it's like an architect, yep. Not the largest dinosaur, the Shang Tungosaurus. You got both, I like you went for two. Awesome. She's like going for extra credit. And what, what's on your shirt, Bryn? She got another dino on her shirt, uh, but we've awesome. moved on. We don't have much time. This one looks great. I like that we've got a, a bunch of notes around here. Mm -hmm. Tony also apparently has some notes as well. Sage. Beautiful. Sage, that's a good name. Beautiful name. That is good. Uh, let's look at Richards. Oh, wow. Wow. It's really, it's really got his booty up in the air. I'm into it. Just really, just. Yeah, I think on. that really bad um, image that you brought up inspired a lot of people's uh, positioning of their dinosaurs today. Great. I don't know what you're talking about. Moving on. Uh, these are great. I love the colors. I love the different colorations. We're not really sure. So, you know, go wild. Speculate away. Haley. This looks great too. I like the size here. Look at the size of those legs. Good stuff. <laughs> Wait, what does this say? With that many teeth, they're a dentist's dream <laughs> or a nightmare. That's or a nightmare, depending on the way you look at it. Yep, that's good. Another Shannon. I like this. We've gone with Shannon, the Shang Tungosaurus. That's good. I like the uh, look at your shirt, the sauropod heart necks. Good for today. I love that. All right. Oh, Tongo. Tungo, it's a good name too. I like that one. All right, our last couple here, Yasmin. Shun, Shun is good. Inez, per usual, looking great. Look at the coloration on this one, that is great. Adela, Adela went with the digital drawing. Shana and Anna, Shana and Anna. 
I love that. Last one. Is this our last one? Lenosaurus Rex. That one looks, I love the colors, the purple. Grace, you love purple. And it appears that it is pooping. Uh, I re believe I read a very high level academic books, book once called Everybody Poops. And I believe <laughs> it applies to dinosaurs as well. That was great. Cutiesaurus from Provenidon. Wow, you guys, there's a lot of them today. Last but not least, Adrian Garwood. Look at that. Wow. I like that. That looks real good. I like that the tail, I think we did an ankylosaur as well. Mm -hmm. We've done both. Your challenge next time, Adrian, is to give them the same color palette as your shirt. That'll be the try. That'll be the challenge for next time. All right, Grace, we're coming to the end of our time here together. Do we have any last, do you have any last final thoughts, comments, questions? Um, yeah, nothing. That was great. I learned a lot. I think I proved that I know a lot today. You do. Yeah. And um, yeah, great as always. Thank you, guys. you are a success story with respect to learning so much about dinosaurs simply by being here in Dino 101 every day. You know, after, I don't know how many years we've known each other now, but you know, it's finally all starting to sink in. I think I just needed hundreds of other people to also be listening into your lessons. Hundreds of others. Yeah. Well, thank you. So you guys, thank you so much for joining us. We do this literally every single day. If you want to throw us some bones and support this endeavor, I'm Dustin hyphen Groic on Venmo or dgroic at Gmail on PayPal. It is very much appreciated. Not just any donations, but literally you guys being here every single day. Uh, it has been hands down the best thing that has given me light and love every day during this quarantine. And I love that we have assembled a great dino quarantine. Uh, and because I love and trust you guys to show up tomorrow, I can't tell you what we're doing yet tomorrow. I've got, I've got a bead on a special guest, so it's determining, it's determined upon whether or not the special guest can come tomorrow. Uh, so you just have to show up tomorrow and see what happens. It's Friday. What else are you going to do? It's going to be great. I'll see you guys tomorrow. But for now, I don't care if you are, let's see, trying to pronounce Shang Tungosaurus, trying to hang the largest animal ever from the roof of the American Museum of Natural History, or rooting around in a big pile of Triceratops poop to try to find evidence of West Indian lilac. Never stop digging. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Happy Thursday. Peace out. Love you guys. Bye, everyone. We do.